In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your edits into crazy mixed media animations straight from your computer. We're going to be using MXM, which is my brand new After Effects plugin, uh, as well as a doodles pack that you can download for free in the description down below. First thing you'll want to do is make sure you have MXM installed and to do so, you'll want to go ahead and drag and drop the ZXP file into the ZXP installer. Once that's done, we can start working. All right, so now that you've created a new After Effects project file, you can go to Window Extension MXM to open up the plugin. What we can do now is click Fetch Comp, select the comp we want the effects applied on and hit Launch. That's gonna fire it right up. And as you can see, we already have a crazy effect just off of one click. First thing you'll wanna do is make sure you turn Posterize on. I usually put it on the eight FPS setting cause that's what I prefer, uh, but just make sure you turn it on. Next up, we've got the scan resolution. Uh, so that's basically going to control the pixel density of the overall scan. My favorite setting is 2x, uh, but you can experiment. 4x also looks really good. Uh, and the more you turn it up, the more it's going to look kind of like cartoonish. Uh, next up, we got the basic features, shake, flicker. Uh, you can turn it on or off. Scatter is basically going to scatter around the pixel grid. That's a really cool effect. It's going to give it a bit more of a rougher look. Uh, but definitely something to keep in mind. And finally, damages, uh, which is going to control if the damages are on or off. I think damages really tie everything together super nicely, so I usually always leave it on. So if we go back up top, uh, we've got the color scan features, uh, which is basically the most important panel of the entire plugin, I feel like, because it's really what's going to affect your entire image and really transpose it from something uh, rather basic to something completely different and funky. So I usually turn the look slider all the way up, but just know that if you turn it down, uh, you're going to get back those original colors from your clip. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. For this example, I think I'm going to go with style two. Uh, I really like what it does to highlights. And then if we click on the source panel, we can finally customize the paper type. So uh, the last one is a very, very cool. It is a bit more subtle than the first one. And I usually like to crank it up all the way since it's pretty subtle. Obviously there are many options. Uh, you can also use the cardboard option. That's gonna give you like a brownish hue uh, into your shadow areas. Um, and next up, we got a bunch of other cool features uh, like the cutouts, which is basically gonna turn on and off the automatic cutouts of your image. Uh, paint splatters, which are basically like uh, color spots that are gonna appear in some areas of your image, marks that are scribbles and just like texts that appear here and there. I pretty much always turn it on because I feel like it just adds another layer of details. And finally, mosaic, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory once again. Since we're dealing with a white background, it's not really gonna show up all that much, so I don't think it's necessary. And finally, all the sliders at the bottom are basically gonna be controlling your source footage, making sure everything pops. And something I've noticed is that this plugin reacts well with overexposed footage, whether it be the color or like how everything pops. So what I usually do is I actually turn up the exposure slider quite a bit and then I tone it back down with the gamma, uh, which basically just adds in some more contrast. Let's say you've added in too much contrast, but you don't want to mess with the contrast ratios. You can turn up the noise slider and that's going to add noise and decrease contrast in your shadows and you'll see it just feels super nice. So once you're happy with that, you can hit confirm and as you can see it automatically created a composition with the mxm tag which means you have your original unfiltered composition and the final one and as you can see guys this is just like crazy I, I can't believe one click allows you to get crazy results like these this already has such a nice texture to it we could call it a day and just you know run with this obviously this music video has a white background so the effects don't show up as much as per se like if you had a proper background but now let me show you my favorite way of using mxm and it is as a effects chain that's going to be applied on top of whatever you're doing under it i'm also going to share with you my favorite techniques i found that work best with this plugin starting with rotoscoping so i'm pretty sure if you're familiar with rotoscoping but we're just going to go ahead and rotoscope our subject don't make it perfect it's actually going to look better if there's error in it because it's going to look more organic as you can see we get this little white outline uh, which is great because it's going to make it look as if we cut it out with scissors so maybe increase it a little bit leave it there trust me i know usually we don't want those sorts of things but in this case it's going to look amazing it's really going to make it pop out as you can see 
uh, if we go over to the MXM comp, uh, we can already see that it's just like outlining it and making it pop like crazy. Obviously on a white background, it's not gonna show up as much, uh, but we'll get there, we'll add effects and layers that's really gonna make it stand out. So first thing I like to add is drop shadows. The way gradients react to MXM is just amazing. So I use a lot of them. I like to add a second layer, but this time around I blur it out. Um, to basically get some sort of feather and blend everything in. Next up, we got doodle animations. So obviously you can download the doodles pack in the description, uh, but that's really gonna help your overall animation feel more organic. Uh, so I think I'm gonna take this little circle thing, put it under our rotoscope subjects and sort of like track it on the floor as if they were, um, as if it was around them. Um, so obviously we're not gonna do emotion tracking. Always keep in mind what I said, you don't need things to be perfect because uh, even the jankiest animations are going to look amazing once you filter it through. So try to have creative ideas and let MXM do all the heavy lifting. So as you can see, I just put a few keyframes here and there to make it seem as if it's tracked. This is pretty intense, so I I'm going to drop down the opacity a bit. And what you need to know is that also um, since MXM reacts to gradients, it's actually all about the opacity of the elements. So if something is very opaque, um, it's obviously gonna show up more, but when you turn it down, the colors and just the way it renders the texture, it's gonna be completely different. So obviously you can also change the shadow color. Um, it's gonna push some more colors to your image. We don't really see it as much in this specific example since the background is white. Uh, but honestly, uh, I prefer to do it this way and it is by creating a solid on which we're gonna apply a circular mask and uh, then blur it out like that. Uh, what I like to do is to actually put it under the subject and you'll see why uh, we did the white little outline cutouts. As you can see now, it, the subjects are popping like crazy. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do with this is basically sort of track it the same way I did with the doodle. I think for this uh, example, we're gonna go for like a yellow and blue sort of color scheme. But if I were to put it red, for example, it would look completely different. So next up is cutouts, probably one of the main effects when it comes to mixed media looks. Um, so I went ahead and duplicated my main video layer, selected a part of the video that I like, and uh, created a rectangular mask around it. Now, uh, the way I usually treat them is I always add a first drop shadow and do the same as I did with the subjects. Uh, so basically, leave it as a black outline, then add a second one, soften it up, make the opacity 100%, and then I had a stroke effect uh, in which I increase uh, the brush size a bit, make it black, and also increase the spacing to get those little dots instead of a solid line. And what we're trying to do here, once again, is not having it look pixel perfect. I also like to animate the rotation of the shadows just to give it some more movement and make sure nothing is feeling too static. Uh, so the way I do that is I basically, uh, you know, animate in a few frames, then loop it out like that. Uh, so that's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, I also like to add another one in the opposite direction on the other drop shadow effect and do the same thing. So set two keyframes, one at zero and then one at minus one and then loop it out like that. Once again, movement is key when it comes to mixed media. So I like to have a position wiggle. So I use 10 and 10 for the values. I, I feel like it works pretty good. And once we have that preset done, uh, we can go ahead and duplicate this same cutout and just change the timing of the video to get another part. Maybe put it behind like that and then uh, just drag it like that. So now I'm gonna add a little doodle uh, just to add some more detail and tie everything together. Uh, so I'm going to put it here, somewhere around here like that. That looks pretty good to me. All right. And um, honestly, at this point, it's just a matter of repeating those same techniques, uh, creating cutouts, adding doodles. I also like to add doodles behind the cutouts, which is going to give it a crazy texture. And that just goes to show you don't need to be an After Effects wizard in order to come up with beautiful looking mixed media animations. And a good example of that would be my latest scene for BLP Kosher's music video, which utilized only hue and saturation effects uh, rotoscoped behind a subject. And as you can see, I think it was pretty effective. So um, keep that in mind. Keep it simple. Just be creative. Keep it rough around the edges. It's going to look better. And honestly, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So if you have any questions or you have any suggestions, like always, make sure to leave them down below in the comment section. 
If you're looking to level up your workflow and your edits, make sure you check the first link down in the description. You can get MXM straight from there. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next one.